Thanks everybody, welcome to Build. I'm your host, Ricky Camilleri. Uh, for three seasons, we've watched as Giovanni Ribisi has attempted to keep his fake family, the Bowmans, from discovering his real identity on Amazon's Sneaky Pete. One of those Bowmans has been the troublemaking teenager, Carly, played by our guest, Libe Barrar. Let's take a look. She was gonna leave me too. Why? I mean, what was so bad that she would do that? I don't know. What did she say? I didn't ask. Why not? I, it wasn't like they were living here. Well, I, but she must have said something. We didn't something. have that kind no, of relationship. No, it, it, it doesn't make sense. You knew that she was leaving, but you didn't know why? I mean, what, what, what would have happened if it wasn't for the accident? Enough! Your mother died. We all want her back. We can't have her. There's some things you may never have answers to, and you have to be okay with that. What if I'm not? Well, you got what you needed, didn't you? You had love. We always, we always gave you love. Everybody, please welcome Libe Barrer. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Congratulations on three seasons of Sneaky Pete. That's amazing. Thank you. How has it been? It's been a dream. I mean, it's been, I feel so lucky every day I get to work with such talented actors. And the cast of Sneaky Pete is incredible. Yeah, I feel like I, every day is a master class, and I just try to like soak up as much as and I then can. And the guest actors that come on as well, yeah. it's all just. I mean, everybody seems like in the New York, in the tri-state area wants to work on Sneaky Pete. Like. <laughs> yeah, I feel very lucky and we have amazing people coming in and out. And also everyone is just, we're all super close and it's like an amazing dynamic and group of people. And yeah, it's so fun. Oh, what is it like on set every day with Margot Martindale and Peter Garrity, two people who I feel like can't not be smart asses, no matter how yeah. much they are told not to be. Uh, they're amazing. I, I feel mean like that in the most loving, complimentary way possible. Absolutely. No, they're the best. Um, something that, uh, well, <laughs> like something that people may or may not know is how much they love to sing. And so there is constantly one of the first, when we were shooting the pilot, when I first was like, this is going to be good, was like, we were shooting, the first thing that we all shot together was like, one of the like family dinner scenes and we were shooting until like three o'clock in the morning and we were just, we we're all there and we, it, we it had been such a long day and we we're all like totally delirious, delirious. I can speak English. Uh, we we're all delirious. And, um, Peter and Margo just start like rocking out on some Irish tunes and we were all just like, this is amazing. And we we're delirious. And we, we all start like singing along and it was the entire cast. And we we're like, I hope the show goes. Cause this is going to be a lot of fun. Wow. How old were you when that happened? Because I know that the pilot was actually shot like a year before you even started shooting or it aired and started shooting the second season, right? Yeah, I was 12. Um, you and I, no, <laughs> no. Um, you can you can look that up on probably Google or something. But Oh, fair I, enough, fair <laughs> enough. But yeah, no, it's been, it was really crazy how long ago we shot that. It was a pilot for CBS a million years ago and then Amazon picked it up and then they, we, the showrunner parted ways for creative differences and then they got a new showrunner. And so it was a whole, it was a full, like, it was like a year and a half between the pilot and the first season. And, um, yeah. Is there any expectation? Were all of you like basically on hold until that yes. happened, until all of that happened? Like definitely on hold. Yeah. <laughs> That's wild. Yeah. And it was also like, it was my first, like my first, I mean, I had had other jobs and stuff, but my first like series regular where you have a contract and stuff. And so I'm like... I was just like, I guess this is how TV shows work is like you do a thing and then they hold you forever and like that you can't do other TV shows and stuff like that. Uh, and then I find out that that is not how they all work. Now, so many of the guest actors that are in the show come from, and we were kind of talking about this in the green room, David Mamet land, Coen brothers land, basically the land of like grifters, mm -hmm. uh, movie grifters. And, uh, you knew right away one of them and said, blood simple. How much has your job been sort of doing the homework of what the influences that are, that ha are, that are on this show? Um, I mean, I, f it's funny. Like, I feel like it's been different. Some people I've like known immediately, like M. Emmett Walsh, who plays uh, Audrey's dad this season. I knew who he I was like, oh my God, Blood Simple, one of my favorite movies. Uh, but other people, like, this is kind of embarrassing, but I knew who Margot was. This was again, like, a million years ago. I knew that Margot Martindale was like Margot Martindale, but I did not know who, I didn't know the degree of 
her work and how, and I mean like Margot's career has been incredible and has gone through so many transformations through the years and whatnot. And I did not know the extent of who Margot Mondale was. But she is. I, I mean, there's a reason that in BoJack yeah. Horseman she is she, yeah. character actress Margot Martindale yeah. because for so long she was in everything but as in these small roles mm -hmm. and she would steal the show all the yeah. time but it wasn't until really the past six or seven years that she became much more of a kind of a household name I think totally yeah and um so it's been interesting so like people like Margot I've like learned her career Peter Garrity that like I everyone should know Peter Garrity's name he's like the most I actually think he's like the best actor in the world he's like an amazing you can be talking to him and then we just like go into rolling and you're like wait did we start and then suddenly he's sobbing and we're and you're just like you're a genius really um, yeah he's I he's magic everything he does and when he and Margot are together it really is like magic and I didn't really know Peter Garrity before you know and because he's also known for a lot of his stage work and stuff and um yeah, he's just a genius. Well, speaking of stage work as well, Marin uh, Ireland as yeah. well is like a big stage actress mm -hmm. in New York. Um, how is it working with her? She's the best. We really are like siblings in real life too. Um, she, it's it's really amazing. I actually feel like I can point to something that each cast member has taught me, and it which is such a gift. And um, Marin is someone who she fights to the death for everything to be the best it possibly can. And everyone else does, like the whole cast does too, which has really been really incredible. But um, Marin is like a soldier for her, arti for like artistic fulfillment and for like the thing to be as, as beautiful and maximum, like maximum human. And um, yeah, she's a warrior in that and she's incredible. So she'll show up and she'll do rehearsals with you and all these other, she'll try to really figure out the scene with you. If you yeah. Can. She and I actually, like we started becoming friends when like in the first season, the first time we had a scene together, we like, I came over to her apartment. We like lived around the corner from each other in the, in the East village. And uh, I went over to her place and we just like ran lines. And that's been really, I feel really lucky that that's been the culture of the show is like, it's all about, we'll all run lines with each other. We'll all like really, dig into the scenes to find like what to make the scenes the best that they can be Wait, everybody it sounds like everybody's happy to be there and to do the yeah. job as an actor yeah. nobody's showing up and being like what is it all right i'm sad and then walking away totally which is yeah. such a gift and it's yeah, yeah. uh giovanni rubisi i've been a fan of i mm -hmm. think since i was like in high school and he was um I think he was in a friends? movie. Oh. No, not Friends, unfortunately. <laughs> he was in a Richard Linklater movie called Suburbia that mm. was kind of like mm -hmm. a, a huge movie for me mm -hmm. when I was a kid. So getting him to see, getting a, a show like this with him is incredible. Yeah. How has it been uh, working with him? He's incredible also. Um, it's funny, like the thing I can point to that he has really taught me is like how to how to how to really create life from what's on the page and to like be really creative with like there's so the, there's infinite possibilities with what's on the page and he's a genius at really finding like those moments of life within that you wouldn't necessarily read and um yeah and he's also like endlessly giving to a story that I like to tell about Giovanni is in the first season I don't know if you guys remember but there's a scene where he is tell the first time that anyone talks to me about my mom and uh he's and he's telling me the story about my mom when we were kids and or, or before I I was a kid. It was when his mom had gone away. Anyway, you'll have to watch it. But he's like talking, he has this like, it's like a two page monologue. Um, and he's telling me the story about my mom and, um, I, and it's a really emotional scene for me. And so like we did it many, many times. We did it take after take after take. And every time he gave me a full performance each time that like two pages of monologue, I'm like crying, he's crying. It's this like really amazing thing. And then we finish. And then I find out that he had had surgery two days earlier. Wow. He had had surgery and he was like still giving this like amazing performance off camera just for me to, which was really so amazing. So he wasn't even on camera for yeah, it. He was just doing it to his, get your coverage. Yeah. I mean, and he did it for his too, but I mean the fact that he like gave full performance every time just on my coverage, having just had surgery two days earlier was just incredible. Wow. Yeah. Um, when did you start acting? Like how, what made you want to start acting? Uh, I think I've always had the bug. Um, when I was eight, I did a play at the Pasadena Playhouse. It was a stage reading-ish play thing. Um, and I had a really embarrassing moment. <laughs> what was your embarrassing moment? I So I was eight years old, and the line was, I had one scene at the end of the play, and basically I, um, the, so I like come in, I played the, the daughter of this woman, 
and the granddaughter and it, the fa the play was about their relationship. And I come out and I had this line that was like, who are the, I was asking, who are you? And I didn't know that on stage you have to, I was, I was eight years old, that you have to wait for the audience, like if the audience laughs, you have to wait to say your line because otherwise no one will hear you. <laughs> um, and so she, so they say, say the line, I, I either say my line before or they say the line before. Anyway, some people are laughing and then over the laughter I go, who are you? And um, people are laughing and the other actress didn't hear me and I'm just standing there like waiting for her to say her line and I'm like, well, I said my line, so it's her turn. <laughs> so you blew and, the whole um, show. So then she asks, it gets worse. So then she goes, she tries to help me and she goes, don't you want to know who I am? And I look at her and I go, uh -huh. I said that already. <laughs> and the audience just burst into laughter and I was mortified. Because for me, it was like, I mean, I'd like to say that that story taught me like, yeah, it was amazing. And that's when I learned I was like funny, but it was actually just like a really humiliating experience as an eight year old. <laughs> <laughs> That is not a very generous thing to do for a performer. No, it's not. Yeah, that was I was I was not a giving performer as an eight year old. I've so that was your first. So that was your first role. When did you start actually auditioning and going out for actual shows and movies? Um, so I did a little bit uh, in high school. I got um, I did some like community theater, and someone had seen me and recommended me to a manager, and so I started auditioning here and there. Uh, and I worked a little bit here and there, but it was always like school first and auditioning second, which like anyone who knows about Hollywood knows you cannot do it that way. Uh, you like need to be, it needs to become your life basically. Um, so I like worked a little bit. I did a little bit of Nickelodeon stuff and then I took a break during college and I graduated a year early and, um, started doing it then. So I guess I just gave away my age and <laughs> I don't think you did. I don't, I, I, I mean, if you did, I'm not smart enough to pick up on what it was. It's I, honestly, it's on Google. <laughs> yeah, I think it is. I think I saw it earlier today too. That's why I wasn't, I yeah. didn't confuse me when you're like, I'm not telling you. I was like, huh? Oh, okay. I'm 35. Okay. So am I. <laughs> um, and now, so you auditioned for Sneaky Pete and you auditioned to play Carly, mm -hmm. right? Um, and what has it been like to see the way that they've sort of given Carly this roller coaster? Each season she has a new thing. And this season she's really trying to find her mom. Mm -hmm. She thinks that she's alive and she gets involved with M Emmett Walsh. Mm -hmm. uh, when they approach it, when they give you these scripts, do you, have, do you ask questions? Are they, do they allow for feedback of any kind? Yeah, it's all super collaborative, especially because, well, we were sort of in the unique um, position where we've had three different showrunners in the last, throughout the show. I so, there was a third. Was there Graham Yost and then a third after that? Yeah, oh, wow. Blake Masters was our showrunner this season. And um, yeah, so it, it's interesting because like each time that someone comes in, with the exception of like David Shore, who created it, and Brian Cranston, so like in the days of the pilot. Yost um, came in for the first season, though, too, right? Yeah. It wasn't like... The first, the showrunner created the pilot and then he left and then Yas came in for one and two and now Blake Masters for three. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Graham did seasons one and two and Blake did three. And um, so we were sort of in this unique position where like we've been living with the characters for longer than the showrunners. So each time the showrunner would come in, it would be like a collaborative conversation about like where we see our character going and all of this stuff. Um, I really loved the ride I got to go on this season. Um, it was really fun and dark and weird and um like I really feel like I got to like dig into the meat of who Carly is and um yeah yeah because often I mean she's gotten episodes before big scenes before but relegated to be more of the teenager who's kind of causing trouble by being a little too curious in this mm. season you really do have your own journey that you that you go on yeah it was um it was really fun and it was also really fun um like getting to work with Margo so much and getting to work with, uh, yeah, I feel like this season was a sort of a coming of age season for Carly. Um, like when I start, when we start, I have all of these questions. I become obsessed with the idea that my mom might be alive and like in a very Carly way, like fully dives into like obsessing over this thing and, um, runs off to California. And, uh, by the end of it, when I, after going through all the things and uncovering things about our past and our family and Audrey's past. And, um, by the end I like come out, I, it's like I, the veil has been lifted and I came out with like, um, more understanding of what family is and people are. And, um, I think she grows up by the end. You know, you said that you got to work with Margot a lot more, um, being a, 
you know, uh, an actress much younger than, and Margot, do you try to take what you can from her while you're working with her? See how she approaches scenes, see what sort of notes she gives or anything like that? Definitely. Yeah. Um, and Margot has been such a, Margot pushes me, Margot like get, and she's like, uh, she's the best. She In really what way? is. Like there are things that I'll try to get away with. Well, Margot is, I mean, I'm like, <laughs> this is all, I mean, she's amazing. And, um, any dinner scene becomes Margot's like the director of the music, which is awesome because it's something like, I feel like often as like a young actor, you're not really aware of the, like there, I just feel like I've been given like insights into, um, I'm trying to think like how to even, there's so many stories I could tell about this, but, um, like that Margot will, Margot will see something that I'm doing and she was like, don't, she was like, don't move around so much. You like hold your power. Like you have more power in this. And so I'm just like, okay. And like, sometimes I'll get angry and be like, I'm not going to do that. And Margaret was like, do it, trust me. And then I'll do it. And I'll be like, oh, she was right. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's more about not fidgeting is maybe the wrong word, mm -hmm. but it's sort of being com comfortable in yourself and present in your center essentially while you're in those scenes with her. Yeah. I mean, that's one example. She's so good at that. Yeah. She's like she's so good at part of her charisma is a stoic power. Mm -hmm. She shows up on screen and it feels, you feel a certain power when it comes to her. Totally. And both she and Giovanni have really encouraged me to like hold my power and not, cause I feel like as a young actor, I'm constantly, all I want to do is like, of course. I'm talking about this. and they both are like, no, just, just let the camera see what's happening. And, um, one example too is I won't give without spoiling the entire end of the season. There's a very, um, there's a very intense scene at the end that Carly has that with Audrey and Marius are both there. And um, I, as a young actor, my impulse was to just like, I just wanted to like sob. And we spent a day filming. It was like five hours of, like we spent five hours of the day and I spent five hours just like sobbing on camera. And um, then Giovanni and Margot were like, well, why don't you try one? Like, maybe just try holding holding your power a little bit more and maybe try it. And at first I was like, no. And then I was like, fine, I'll try it. Um, which is generally how those things go. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, so, I, so I did and they wound up using, those were the takes that they used. And I was like, <laughs> and at first I was a little bit like, as an actor, like they didn't use any of the scenes where I was crying. But then I was like, oh, it's so much better for the story and really like makes Carly's, journey come together in a more whole way it um, makes you look stronger as yeah, well yeah both as a performer and the character yeah. yeah and so i'm super grateful for them and for like the um yeah and for and i feel like we're just all constantly talking about how to not only make the scenes better but how to be better and like talk, like shane and i have shane like took me to his acting class and i always talk about my acting class and like we're always talking about like the nooks and crannies of like acting and how to get as deep into another human's life as we can and well you can yeah. tell on the show i mean it is a group of incredible actors putting this materials together um and i love the show i love season three thank you so oh, much thanks. for putting it out there uh it's on amazon now mm -hmm. and thank you so much for coming by. Everybody give Lee Bay a huge round of applause for being here. Let's Thank hear. you, guys. <laughs>